Hi, hello, welcome to Quality Thought YouTube channel. Good morning, all of you. My voice is audible. Is my voice is clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. Thanks for confirming. Right. So we are going to start the session. So as I told you last day, to all of you, today we are going to uh, discuss about the content, chapter by chapter, uh, which content we are going to deal as a part of our complete .NET full stack developer with Cloud. So I'm sharing my screen. Please see. Is my screen is visible? Yes, sir. Yeah. All of you. Right. Now, as a part of our curriculum, first we need to start a study about the .NET frameworks. This is very important. Why? Because there are two types of frameworks are there in the .NET. One is Windows based and one is platform independent based. These two are called as a, a .NET framework and .NET core. But after the recent year, okay, the Microsoft merged these two and they provided a unified framework named as a .NET. That's all. There is no word framework, .NET, .NET 5, .NET 6, .NET 7. So .NET 5, .NET 6, .NET 7, in that uh, .NET 5 is not there right now. .NET 6 is a LTS version, means a long-term support. And .NET 7 is the standard version, STS. Right, so that's why if you want to work with uh, .NET framework individually, with for uh, say some like a, a Windows based version, you need to select it uh, separately. If you want exclusively, okay, I want to develop only Windows based applications, then you need to select .NET framework. Whereas uh, if you want to work with .NET Core, okay, you can develop, you can use .NET Core separately also. But Microsoft recommends that uh, you need to use .NET 6 and .NET 7. So among these two, the .NET 6 is a standard. I mean that long-term support. It is recommended. .NET 5 is a no more. Okay. So here, so finally the conclusion is uh, you need to work with .NET. Okay. There is no word called .NET framework. .NET. .NET 6. .NET 7. Next, what are the different types of applications? The .NET framework, we will deal with the uh, .NET framework architecture and its components later in the middle of the curriculum because at the introduction level, it is not possible. It is not that much easy to understand the internal things of uh, .NET framework. So the .NET framework means just it is a collection of tools to understand at the entry level. Okay, what are they? Simply say, for your better understanding, I will tell you, uh, say, all of you know about C language, C, C++, Java. Now, to compile a C program, C compiler is required. To compile a Java program, Java compiler is required. So for every high level language, to compile it, the compiler is required. In the .NET framework, more than one compiler is provided. Among them, C sharp compiler is one of, one of it. So in such a way, multiple compilers are there. Next, to write a program, we should have some API. API means, for example, if you if you know C language, without knowing the printf and scanf, is it possible to write a program? No. So if you want to write a program in any using any language, you should you should learn some functions depending upon the type of language. Okay, if it is function oriented, you need to learn functions. 
how to write the main method, how to take the input, and how to give the output like that. Such type of basics. And depending upon your requirement, you need to learn more functions also. Suppose if it is an object-oriented programming language, you need to learn classes because the functions are inside the classes. So you need to learn about classes. So finally, the, those classes are the methods, whatever the functions are predefined and they are allowed to use by you as a part of your program. How they are made available to you? Just let us compare once again with C language. In the C language, you use you use it generally the header files, stdio.h, conio.h. <coughs> Sorry. So here, that header file contains the uh, the set of uh, the functionalities. I mean the set of functions. Now, in the same way, in the .NET also, API are provided. They are called as a Framework class library, FCL or BCL, framework class library, a collection of classes because it is a, it contains object oriented languages. So that's why as like in Java, okay, in Java we call them as packages. Here we call, we call, we call the same concept, okay, which is like packages. Here is a, here it is a, called as a assemblies or libraries, assemblies. So all the .NET predefined classes are provided with a name called class library or base class library or framework class library. Next, once you created a class, sorry, once you developed a program and you compiled it by using compiler, next, you need to execute it. To execute that program, one execution program, one execution Environment is required, on execution engine is required. In Java, it is called JRE, Java Runtime Engine. Here also, one runtime engine is there. It is called with a name CLR, Common Language Runtime, CLR. So the basic fundamental elements in the .NET framework are the predefined classes with the name BCL or FCL. Next, compilers. Next, CLR, the execution engine. So these three are the part of a framework. Okay, there are so many other things are there, but these things are easy to understand at the entry level. Okay, next. After that, next, we will discuss about the what are the different types of applications you can develop by using a .NET. So among that applications, with which applications you are going to deal as a part of full stack. So basically the full stack means web. Okay, fine. But there are different types of web applications are there. And there are different, there is a possibility for different types of logics are there while developing the, the applications. So we are, we are going to deal with the, which type of applications. And .NET, by using .NET, what are the different types of applications you can develop? Next, we are going to use which type of, which Visual Studio, IDE, 2019 and 2022. Now, what are the features of Visual Studio? Why this Visual Studio features you should know? Because when you are working in a company, productivity is very important. Productivity means the code written by you are the tasks completed by you in a given unit of time. So, so here, that productivity is completely dependent on IDE. So, so here, different features of Visual Studio you should know. How the Visual Studio handles the projects, how it organizes your project, and how you are able to download different types of libraries uh, which are required for your project. And uh, how, what are the different types of uh, debugging options available while you are writing the 
or code. So how the intelligence feature, I mean the helping system of Visual Studio helps you to while developing the code to improve your productivity and to avoid the errors and all. See the Visual Studio is, uh, is came up with the AI based intelligence feature, especially the 2022. So when you are typing the code, it, in the back end it observes, it, it monitors, so it suggests uh, the next coming code automatically. Sometimes, uh, it, sometimes it suggests the entire class also. Sometimes it suggests uh, the entire function structure also. In such a way, it, you, you are able to generate automatically the code with a single click. Next, after that. Hello? My voice is audible, all of you. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, right. So next, after that, we are comparing the .NET with the, some, some other technologies. Okay, what are the different features, uh, technical aspects point of view and uh, some functional techniques point of view. Right. See, because when you are working with .NET, okay, you should have some knowledge over the compute technologies also. Next, after that, the C sharp language. See, here we designed this C sharp curriculum by considering the beginners and the professionals also. Remember that. So that's why we started with the basic data types. So that those who have only the knowledge, basic knowledge about the C, okay, they can also learn this C sharp. Suppose if you do not have any fundamental knowledge about the programming languages. So those people also can learn C sharp, but just a few days, first few days, they need to work hard little bit when compared to others, that's all. So here, the C sharp version, we are, see here we are teaching C sharp 10, remember that. Because all the MNC companies are asking the latest features of C sharp, remember that. Not 4.5 features or six or seven. They are asking complete latest features, including the basics. So that's why here, versions and frameworks. This is a little bit important. Why? C sharp latest version is available in which framework? You should know. See, the .NET framework is ended at 4.8. .NET core framework is ended at 3.1. Later, these two are merged together and .NET is king, a unified framework, .NET 5, .NET 6, and .NET 7. Now, if you want to work with C-Sharp 10, which .NET framework is, is need to be selected? So, in which framework, which version of C-Sharp is available? You should know. That is the important point. If you want to work with C-Sharp 10, which framework you need to select? You should know. That is the important point. So, that's why versions and uh, the Freya versions of the C sharp and it is associated with uh, and they are associated with uh, which frameworks. Next, uh, we start with console applications. Console application means uh, character user interface, character user interface applications, uh, which are looks like uh, our basic C programs. So by uh, starting from the data types, so primitive data types, abstract data types, and advanced data types, type safety, variables, control structures, arrays, and all. While dealing with basics, see, don't think that these are basics. C sharp shown the difference even in the basics also. That is one technical aspect. Second aspect is you need to try to learn all these things in terms of in, the, in terms of groups and in terms of uh, in terms of our real world requirements. It means when you are discussing about the data types, you need to think how these data types are useful in the real world application. 
in such a way you need to uh, you need to learn that is very important right so next after that uh, based on these basics hands ons will be provided to you and the interview questions will be provided to you remember next after that the most important chapter is oops so in these oops we are going to cover the principles of oops and what are the different types of classes and what are the different types of variables different types of methods and class versus structure constructors and destructors object okay and different types of methods and different types of classes and uh, while working with the different types of uh, uh, classes and methods okay what are the different types of keywords you need to use and how they are suitable for the real world applications for which requirement you, uh, you need to use these are uh, all these uh, uh, methods and variables and all each concept is suitable for one type of requirement so you need to map them for this requirement you need to use this method for this requirement you need to use this variable so you need to in such a way you need to learn all these things so this chapter is very very important why because it includes technically the basic concepts and at the same time it includes the very advanced topics also whatever the code you write here in the same way you need to develop the project in the same way you need to organize the project because project is a collection of classes and again that classes are divided into groups because all the classes are not in one are not as one unit so how to organize these classes how to organize the methods inside the classes what are the different types of methods what are the different types of variables okay which one to be used for which type of requirement which is best okay suppose for one requirement if more than one option is available which one to be selected so all these things you need to learn here so in such a way we designed this curriculum and hands on some the interview questions related to the oops so here don't think that just it is oops oops is just okay encapsulation inheritance polymorphism no it is more than that okay, so many things are there technical and functionally we will discuss everything but here see it is a pillar remember that it is a very strong pillar for advanced topics and for project development also remember right next after that exception handling when you are developing a code okay there is a possibility for rise of errors so what are the different types of errors and how they need to be handled see whenever an error is occurred what happens the program is terminated abnormally without executing the further statements so how to handle that errors we are going to learn under this chapter called exception handling next after that delegates what is this delegates in c language pointers are there please try to remember pointers suppose if you don't know about the pointers let's leave it see these delegates can be called as like a, say a variable which refers to some other element it may be a variable or it may be a function anything so instead of if you want to use that element instead of calling that element by its name you can use this delegate say there is a function called y if the y is referred by x instead of y you can use x so now the x is going to be called as in your basics in your c language basics it is going to be called as pointer but here it is going to be called as delegate so here it is pointer to functions in such a way you can understand but in the real time this delegates plays very very important role the way of using of delegate is different little bit okay when you are learning about the delegates it is okay it is just like a, a pointer to function 
in such a way. But when you are using this delegator, okay, the context of usage of delegator is a little bit different. Okay, it, it, it refers to function, no doubt. But the way of using a delegator is a little bit uh, different. Okay, you need to learn the delegates in such a way with the proper example. Right. Next. After that, the hands on based on the delegates and interview questions. Next. Multi threading. So, this is also one of the important chapter. So, how to execute the code of your project okay, parallelly or concurrently? How to execute? The general mechanism to execute the code is it is like sequence, one after another. Suppose if you called a fun, uh, uh, some two functions, what happens? First function is executed, second function is started when the first function is completed. So it means uh, when one function is executing, there is no chance for other function to execute concurrently. But by using threading, you can you can achieve it. For in the real in the real world applications, this multi-threading is very important. Right. See, for example, when one client is connected to the server, okay, other client also able to work with the server. How it is possible? When server handling, when the server is when the server able to communicate with one client, okay, at the same time it is able to communicate with the other client also. In such a way. <laughs> In such a way, it it able to handle n number of clients. How it is possible? So, see, learning is different. Applying that concept in the real world is different. So, the multi-threading is very very important nowadays. Right. So, see, the expansion of multi-threading is not just. Uh, uh, I mean that it is not limited to one chapter. Multi-threading, you, you can use multi-threading in a different way depending upon your creativity. In the back-end code you can use, in the front-end code also, there is a possible, depending upon your type of application. Okay, to improve the productivity, to improve the productivity and uh, whenever you want to, de whenever you, whenever you develop it, Okay, a enterprise level application. So uh, simply say, whenever, whenever you want to do multitasking, so multi-threading is very, very important. Right. So here, it is like a, it depends upon your project, multi-threading plays very key role. So don't think that just it is a, it is limited to one chapter. Next, after that, the hands on and interview questions. Here, see, in the, in the multi-threading, one more advanced concept is there. Okay, it comes later. Next, class library. Very, very important. Remember, whenever you are dividing the project into layers, this class library project is very important. The entire .NET library is provided, .NET classes, predefined .NET classes, thousands of classes are provided in the form of libraries. See, once you develop your .NET project, you also need to organize the entire project into layers. Now, class library. Suppose, just uh, I want to explain with a few words. Whenever you develop a certain logic, data access layer, Okay, business logic layer, which works in the back end. How they need to be developed? They need to be, they should be developed. Okay, they should be developed in the real world in the form of class libraries only. Why? Why? Because I want to tell you one thing. See, here one database is there. 
See, very easy to understand. No need of any technical knowledge here. Now, this is the database. Now, here, one application is there. Say, for example, a Windows application. And here, it is a mobile application. Just, okay. Now, a web application. Here you can add. A web application. In such a way, in the real world, you can add eight types of applications also eight types okay so i don't want to make it complex but simple point is uh, these all applications requires this data i can expand this project okay in the in a deeper way also but abstractively i am trying to tell you because it is a, it is just about the curriculum explanation this windows application wants this data this mobile application wants this data and this web application also wants to use this data. So to use that data, to work on that data, I developed one logic, say data access layer. Means simply say DB logic. Now these three projects wants this database. They wants to work on this database. Now, the, see how to develop this DB logic. Uh, you should develop this DB logic as a reusable component. Remember that reusable component. Please remember that word. Reusable component. So when you develop this as a reusable component, what happens? Only one copy is enough to give the service to more than one client. It is an abstractive diagram. Remember that. Okay. So many hidden details are there. So any application can use this library. Okay. See, there is only one copy. If this type of architecture is not available, what happens? You need to develop the separate DB logic for each client. For Windows application, one copy of DB logic. For mobile application, one copy of DB logic. For web application, one copy of DB logic. But in the real world, it is not happening like that. Only one component providing the service to all. So all these clients consuming the functions which are inside the DB logic. Right. So now, see the better, the best example for it is uh, Amazon. See, Amazon mobile app is there. Amazon website is there. You can you can get the you can get your products from the Amazon mobile app, and you can get your products uh, from Amazon website also. It means both the applications are using a common logic at the back end. So how to develop this logic uh, by using class library projects? That is DLL, Dynamic Link Libraries. So finally, you need to divide the project into layers. This is one layer. So to develop the logic as a reusable component, one, see, this class library chapter concept is useful. Remember that. So very, very important projects point of view. And projects, I mean that where Whenever you want to divide the project into layers, whenever you want to develop a reusable logic, reusable logic, remember that. Next. Is it clear all of you? Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah? Right. See, don't worry, just it is a content explanation only. Right? While, while you are learning, okay, we'll provide pin to pin steps for everything. So interview point of view also, this is very important. 
Next, one more important chapter at the basic level introduces is collections. Why? Why this chapter is very important? See, when you are developing the projects for the real world entities, in the real world entities, everything is more than one. Remember that. Because if you are developing an e-commerce application, e-commerce application, simple. In the e-commerce application, suppose when you went into a supermarket, for which client you are going to develop uh, uh, e-commerce, how many products? How many products are available in the supermarket? Only one product? No, thousands of products. It means collection, right? Only one customer is available. Only one customer comes to the supermarket. No, multiple customers means collection of customers, right? Only one order is generated. Only one order is generated by the customer. No, multiple orders. Then it is a collection of orders, right? Only one bill is generated at the supermarket. No, multiple bills are generated. Means collection. So it means everything is a collection. Supermarket announces only one offer, only one discount. No, multiple discounts. Right. So uh, on groceries, one type of discount. Okay. On clothes, one type of discount. Even in groceries also, different different types of offers. It means different types of packages collection more than one so here the point is uh, more than one in the real world you should able to deal with uh, more than one not with single value okay so so how to handle this collection so dot net provided the c shop dot net provided okay three defined api to work with collections which makes our job very, very easy. Managing the managing multiple values is not easy. Remember, it is highly complex. It takes more time. But that job is made easy by this collections chapter. So that's why in the introduce point of view also, or even the logic development point of view also in the projects, collections is very important. See, for example, if you are developing a Swiggy-like application, assume how many uh, how many uh, uh, restaurants are added to the Swiggy? More than one collection of restaurants. How many types of items are provided by the restaurants? More than one, right? That is, how many items are there in the order of a customer? One or more, right? It means uh, in the real world. If you if you are trying to write develop a logic, it includes managing more than one item or more than one value. Means collection. Right? So that's why see, suppose you are developing an application for library, collection of books, collection of subscribers. Right? So in this way, everything is a collection. Everything is more than one. Right. Suppose you are developing an application for an hospital, collection of doctors, collection of employees, collection of medicines, collection of patients, collection of inpatients, collection of outpatients, collection of appointments. So in such a way, everything is more than one. Right. So for that purpose, the .NET provided collection API. Okay. In other languages also collection API is there. In Java, it is called uh, util. Here we are calling it as a collection. Okay, right. So, so there are different types of collections are there. Generic collections and non-generic collections. And uh, uh, while dealing with same type of values and heterogeneous type of values, how to handle? Okay, how to work? Which collection? Uh, which collection API to uh, suitable for which type of data? So many things here to discuss. So this is very, very important. Collections, hands-ons and uh, interviews at the end of that uh, chapter. Next, link you. See, all are able to follow? Hello? Is it clear? Hello? Is it clear?
ओके राइट नेक्स्ट वन मोर इंपॉर्टेंट चाप्टर नवे डेज एस्पेषली लिंक यू लांग्वेज इंटिग्रेटेड क्वरी जनरली दिस क्वरी मीन जनरली दिस वर्ड कम्स वेन यू आर डीलिंग विथ एस क्यू एल ओके so uh, sql query sql is a query language but sql is different and high level languages are different okay see here when you are working with a query it is as it is different from our high level language working mixing the query with uh, our high level language is a is a little bit complex process because sql syntax is different our language syntax is different but without sql it is not possible to interact with a database that is that is one problem second problem is in the real world i mean that in the programming world when you when you develop a program okay you are storing the data in so many elements not only in the database a variable contains value the array contains value okay and a collection see already in the above chapter you learned collections here so these collection elements contains data so to work on that collections and to work with any database component which contains data i need a query like sql like language but it should be compatible with c sharp actually here compatibility means what very simple sql syntax is different c sharp syntax is different okay the same thing happens in java also java syntax is different sql syntax is different so the java developers feels inconvenience to work with sql simply say why because see the c sharp developers or java developers or any high level language developers they feels little bit inconvenience why simple when you are working with java or when you are working with c sharp okay your mind is mind works according to c sharp syntax but when you encountered one sql statement okay immediately you need to think about okay what is the syntax of sql so you need to remember the syntax the syntactical rules of sql so how you remember how how to remember all these rules and regulations you are you are a c sharp developer you are very much convenient about c sharp i want to be everything as c sharp that's all i don't want to use any sql but without sql it is not possible to interact with the database then how so then the language link you is the solution language integrated query okay which is a part of c sharp which follows the which is which follows or which accepts the c sharp syntax remember that so that uh, you so that what happens the visual studio also shows helping i mean that it shows the syntax help for link you whereas visual studio never shows the help related to the sql because sql is a different language sql is identified by sql compiler not by the c sharp compiler remember that there is a link you there is a link you it is a, a part of c sharp right so and it able to deal with any type of data source not only the database okay so that's why this link you is a very very important now it is right next the lambda expressions so here this lambda expressions i want to write a function in a, in a short format the expression expression means just it seems to be like see a plus b it is like an expression but a plus b after the execution of a plus b it returns a value okay so here writing a function in a in a in a lambda expression syntax point of view according to lambda expression syntax here it is a, like a you can say like it is a short form it is like a short form okay so see there are so many things are there 
this link u and this lambda expression these are all little bit uh, related we'll see these things one by one and anonymous function okay anonymous function what is this anonymous function anonymous means unknown okay a, a function without name becomes anonymous function okay so where it is useful you are saying that it is function right function takes input function returns output so how the lambda expressions how the lambda expressions concept is useful to create functions and how they behaves what is their syntax where they are useful okay so these are all we are going to learn here this is also very important in the projects point of view and coding point of view next after that io so input and output so reading the data from a file and writing the data to files this concept is very important why when you are developing the projects okay for example i will explain one, with one uh, with one uh, one or two examples suppose you develop an application and in that application user login is there user login is there okay user login so and user entered the user and password and clicked the login right now i want to record that login time and the employee details for the for for the review okay separately right in a in a in a easy format okay in a performance point of view storing the data in the database is little bit uh, it takes more time okay i want to store that data in the in a simple way it means uh, notepad text file right text file occupies very less space right or wrong and you can open the text file by using uh, any small software right suppose if you store the data in the database you need client software to open it okay if suppose if you store the data in the sql server again a client software is required to open that sql server to check the data suppose if i store the data in a notepad okay the login details of that user at what time the user logged in and uh, what is the logout time the user name and all right then simply you can open that notepad and you can check the details so in such situations uh, this input and output io package is very much useful remember that okay next one more important suppose you develop a server side application for example just assume while executing that program suddenly some error is occurred suddenly some error is occurred i want to store that error information where okay just create a notepad file and write that error information into that these are called as log files okay so the server administrator is Okay, they, if they want to know about the error, they will open that log files. And when a transaction is going on, okay, I want to record in the back end, okay, when the transaction is started, and how the transaction is went, and finally when the transaction is ended. So I want to record everything, every step, what is happening while the process is going on. Now in that situation. writing that data into notepad file is the best choice now how you are able to write that data into a notepad by using this io package okay so in the real world application development this way of coding is very very important okay right so is it clear all of you so io package so, so up to some extent we need to see these io packages right how to uh, open how to create a file and how to work with directories and all okay next data annotation very important chapter data annotations see here validations and mapping this data annotations concept is very very important and very much useful in the advanced topic of ef entity framework okay see here here see all of you 
when you are when you are dealing with a database database is not dot net remember that sql server or oracle or mysql whatever it is they are not dot net and uh, as a c sharp developer you want to write everything in terms of in in, in c sharp only okay suppose if you want to create a table for example if you want to create a table you need to use sql create table table name like that but but by using by using entity framework you can create a table okay with c sharp code automatically okay now what is the relation between that entity framework and this data data annotation see in the oops in the first chapter here you learn how to write a class okay how to write a class i told you these are not basics it is a pillar to the advanced topics now whatever the class you create sir, that class is made equal to a table suppose you are creating create table products okay create table products in the sql server or oracle or in the mysql whatever but instead of creating a table you create a class 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 name okay class products so class already you know how to create a class because you learned in the oops concept right but that class should be made equal to table how you makes a class is equal to the table okay class is a c sharp element table is a rdbms package okay i mean sql server or oracle element how you can make your class is equal to a, a table okay see while while creating a table you need to specify column names data types primary key foreign keys constraints different types of constraints and all so here when you create a when you created a class that class should be created by considering the features of table how it is possible how it happens you are a c sharp developer you are not an sql developer but you are creating a class and by using that class you are creating a table without writing the sql code nowadays in the real time projects very 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 important remember that is possible by using these two these two chapters data annotations and regular expressions remember that these two most very very important chapters these two see here see validations and mapping these two chapters are sub chapters are very important mapping means mapping your class with the table okay and giving the identity to the class as a table so in in both in the both the situations this data annotations are important validations validations means primary key foreign key specifications and all see you are not using sql here the beauty is uh, you are creating a c sharp class that's all that according to that c sharp class specifications a table is created in the back end so you are you are a complete c sharp developer you no need to concentrate on sql that is the beauty of this okay so the regular expressions validations see these are all related to that one and this regular expressions is a, it is used as a part of it but the this generally the regular expression is a, is a purpose for validations for it is for validation suppose you created a variable in that variable which type of value you want to be there okay employee name in that variable what type of value you want size character's point of view and uh, the order of character's point of view and all okay right so these two are very important the knowledge about these two chapters is very very important remember that okay clear all of you hello next after that database programming this is the traditional database program adwo.net 
activates data objects with the dot net so the introduction and the basic operations about the adv.net library okay we will see uh, the uh, the basics of adv.net and some functionalities related to the adv.net okay because why we included this one when you are when when see it makes you see it is a when when you want to deal with an existing code of any project okay they generally they you they you they use this uh, adv.net in the old projects so to make you comfortable we included this adv.net also here next even even some uh, see some maybe some companies are asking the adv.net also some companies but anyway the knowledge about this adv.net is important now the most important chapter this is ef.net okay mandatory remember that every company asking ef.net in that ef.net see it is called orm framework model mapping see i here i specified here i used model class mapping see the mapping is came here in the data annotation also mapping this mapping and this mapping is same remember that okay so data access layer generator so in that in that code sorry in this ef.net the most important area or the most important methodology is code first approach remember that there are three types of approaches are there in the in the entity framework okay code first database first and model first but in that the companies are asking okay code first approach they are giving the first priority to the code first approach in that again two things are there code first approach with existing database code first approach with non existing database these two are important okay now in this code first approach and while dealing with entity framework we need to use okay the data annotations regular expressions fluent api and uh, creating a data access layer by using a entity framework and everything you should uh, you should know okay in a perfect way remember that okay so the hands on and interview questions related to the entity framework very very important chapter you cannot skip it remember that okay next after that asp.net web application development by using a asp.net library so this is again the traditional one aspx so just a limited introduction about the aspx because nowadays the companies are not asking aspx but you should have a knowledge about the aspx okay so the aspx introduction here and some programs about uh, aspx right now the most important chapter mvc web application development using mvc model view control architecture okay so here what is mvc dividing the entire web application pro lay web application development logic into three parts view layer view layer means uh, which is visible to the client and uh, the back end is controller database is handled by model three layers mvc model view control architecture so how to develop the web applications by using a mvc right so whatever the topics you learned in the above 19 chapters all are useful in the mvc application development along with mvc you need to use the above chapters also so here this is one of the major role by you web developer okay so this chapter is very very important next after that the second major role web api web api so here the api means function you develop a function web means assume that it is internet okay now in the see in the website website is a collection of web pages right now the web pages 
i mean that website is deployed on the server it means web page is on server now assume instead of a web page instead of a web page okay in the place of web page you are going to place web api just assume okay i mean that a function okay when a page is web page is placed in the website it it is allowed to access by anyone right or wrong right now if you place the function if you place the function in the web in the web application uh, or in the web server what happens anyone can access that function see see don't think that how you are able to place the function technically we will take care about that one later functionally think once think in this way a web page is placed on the server so anyone can access that page right now instead of a web page i am i am i am placing a function okay the general word function right when a function is placed in the web what happens as like web page anyone can access that that function okay now that function is called as api okay so function means logic function means what logic so anyone can access how how a function is made accessible to all okay why this the why this type of architecture is required here see in this example this web app, this web application this mobile app and this windows app all are accessing the db logic right now in this example now all applications connects to web api and this web api uses db logic so here this web api is allowed to use by any type of client any type of client developed by any type of any technology okay this windows application assume it is by using dotnet this mobile application by using android okay see again this web app is by using a, say like asp.net or something any any type of client application can use this logic that is the beauty of web api okay so in the enterprise level application development when multiple clients are there multiple different types of clients by using different different technologies any tech any client by using any technology can use the back end functionality how it is possible see a c function can call another c function only right or wrong right so yeah, a technology called x can call the same technology only right right so but here this windows application is a different application using different technology this mobile application is a different application by using different technology this web application is a different application using different technology but these three are connecting to web api how how this web api is compatible with all these tech, all these type of client applications so how how to develop that how to how how the web api need to be created it need to be created according to a principles called rest rest principles rest web api remember okay so here this is the very very important chapter and very very important role okay for you right so this web api are developed by using asp.net asp.net web api this is another major role by you okay right so now here up to here it is dotnet now we are entering into the second dotnet second category or second version or anything dotnet core it is platform independent okay 
so by using dotnet core okay we need to develop uh, the same applications again yes ef core so you need to start here ef core here you learn ef dotnet now here you need to learn ef ef core mvc core and asp dotnet core so dotnet core asp dotnet core asp dotnet mvc core and ef core right but you need to learn everything everything again once again okay so what is the functional difference what is the project difference project architecture difference what is the internal uh, architecture of dotnet core how the dotnet core works how the dotnet core projects are organized okay what are the different types of new files okay. everything everything so new projects point of view this is very very important all the companies are expecting uh, you should know the core every developer should have an experience with the uh, core libraries okay. so here the most important words you need to remember middleware and dependency injection the entire dotnet core the entire dotnet core the entire dotnet core is dependent on two types of elements i mean the two types of architecture or we can call internal elements or anything building blocks or anything they are middleware and dependency injection dependency injection is a technique okay middlewares are nothing but uh, they are the actual components okay i will explain about the middlewares later these two are these two are the basics for dotnet core remember that the entire dotnet core is built based on these two okay so in terms of see the functionally here mvc is there here also mvc is there but the internal structure difference you should know okay right so again a very very minute i mean that uh, every point is important okay you should not neglect that uh, already you learned mvc here okay it does not mean that uh, this mvc is not important no very very important right so next web api asp dotnet core web api remember that this is core version so already you learned asp dotnet web api here it is asp dotnet core web api right and there are so many techniques are there here okay see cors problems okay jwt json web token implementing the rest principles perfectly okay accurately right and all so this is another major role okay so in each major role you are learning two versions of api one is dotnet based second one is dotnet core based remember that next the client side technologies html5 css javascript and the bootstrap okay up to some extent right next what are the tools postman and fiddler okay why this postman and fiddler you are developing this web api right here i told you this web api is accessed by around eight types of clients in that clients this postman and fiddler also comes using postman and fiddler you can access the web api no need to develop any client software okay see i developed a web api i want to test it i want to test it i developed a web api program i want to test it how by using this postman you can test uh, this web api right no need no need to write any other client program this postman is enough just download the software install it and learn how to consume this web api by using postman and fiddler okay one tool is enough both you can learn it is not a big problem next which id you are going to use for for our regular applications visual studio 22 okay and visual studio 19 2019 and 
but react and react are angular we use this visual studio code okay because industry recommended visual studio code by using visual studio also you can develop react and angular applications by integrating them with the server side the predefined templates are available in the dotnet remember but when you want to work individually with react or angular then visual studio code is recommended okay next which web server you are using ias internet information services okay so you should have some knowledge about ias okay ias internal modules and how to deploy a web application on the ias server how to deploy okay all next in the above all chapters you learned how to write a program how to write the logic but how to organize that logic that is important point in the above all chapters you learned how to build okay but how to organize that code that is very important okay so design patterns and solid principles the companies are expecting you should know design patterns which pattern is is useful in which way of application i mean that in in which type of application in which way for which type of logic okay which type of pattern is important and how to when you are developing a function okay how to uh, how to optimize that function okay how to organize how to design that function so in so finally these two are very very important nowadays companies are expecting you should know about these patterns at least uh, some important patterns are there around 5 6 important patterns are there okay abstract and uh, abstract patterns in that again sub patterns are also there okay repository pattern some patterns are there so you should able to write the code here okay not just about knowing the patterns you should able to write the code by using this design patterns okay right next after the testing see this here whatever the functions you developed either whether may be web api or it may be database related logic functions or anything they need to be tested by developer only by using which framework you are going to test n unit okay functional testing and non functional testing what is the difference between functional testing and non functional testing for example i developed see the in the in the documentation as per the documentation okay you need to develop a function with a name say for example with a name add product okay with input values say like just okay now here whether the, a function is created whether a function is created hello hello any problem okay for this sir it's an internal here whether whether the pro, whether the function is created with the given name or not i want to check because the function name or the function prototype is not in your hands as per given documentation you need to write the code remember that in the company so you are not supposed to give your own name you need to give the name to that function as specified in the specifications which are given by the company right as per documentation so now are you created really a function with the given name or not how to check in the n unit you can check it non functional test okay and what are the how many number of input values two values okay and what is the first input value type integer what is the second input value type string okay whether this function is created 
with ad ad product or not with a name ad product or not with two input values or not in that two first one is integer or not second one is string or not these are all called as non functional testing okay now after that you need to execute this function by providing the input values okay so give the values to to that function and execute it now check that whether the function is working properly or not that is called functional testing okay so checking the name and checking the number of input values checking their data types and all it comes to comes under non functional testing okay next whether that function is working perfectly or not that is called functional testing so here you need to know how to test every every function as a uh, in a, is in terms of functional and non functional okay right next after that you are going to work with react or angular okay in react we are going to deal with okay 20 plus topics in angular in angular also we are going to deal with 15 plus topics that is important point now see here this rest web api is there here a new client comes react or angular a react or angular client also can communicate with the web api yeah so now next after that you should have a knowledge about working knowledge about the git git and github repository okay version control systems or repository anything so how to push the code to the git and uh, see in the in the real time not only you you and your co members develops the code and pushes that code to a common repository okay so here centralized repository and distributed repository there are two types of repositories are there okay centralized version controlling system and distributed version controlling system it is a distributed version controlling system remember that okay so you maintain your code locally and commonly also but it is a team work all that code need to be pushed to common repository so how you pushes and what are the different types of problems comes while working with git okay giving the code to the git and getting the code from git both happens push and pull okay there are so many things are there collision occurs sometimes the collision also occurs remember that okay so right so how to resolve that collisions and all so git and github and what are the different types of git commands <coughs> next next the cloud applications so how to use the azure cloud azure cloud services you develop a web application okay a specs or mvc okay any a web api how to deploy this application on the azure cloud next uh, you created a database how to create a database on the azure cloud and how to connect all these things next how your visual studio and uh, git repository and azure these are all synchronized together okay that is ca and cd pipelines okay right so next once the application is created how to deploy it on the azure services that is one aspect in that the docker comes into the picture by making your application as a container okay you are going to deploy it on so this container based architecture is very very important nowadays right so that's why docker 
so how to create a docker container and how to make our application uh, as a docker container okay right next deployment on the azure kubernetes these are all and along with this how to use azure api as a part of your dotnet program okay you can use you can program with cloud cloud api not only you are using the not only using the cloud services you can write programs also okay for simple example i want to tell you to the azure portal if you want to log in okay azure portal screen is required azure portal login screen is required but by using a dot net program i want to log in how okay i want to upload a file to the azure i want to download a file through program i want to do it you got the point through program not through the portal remember that i want to write my own program to interact with azure services how right so these are all comes under cloud next the rdbms database so in this database concepts normalization and what is the importance of normalization and first and second normal forms what are keys these are all you required right and this concept is useful while dealing with the ef also remember because in the ef when you are creating a class you should know what is key what is non key column and all next next in the sql server we are going to deal with the sql queries from the basics creation of table to up to transaction management which includes ddl tml commands and queries joins triggers functions indexes and transaction management also when more than one user working on the same table and same data how to handle that is comes under transaction management okay so these are all the total concepts about our curriculum okay and finally you are going to deal with uh, two projects entire architecture project with uh, react js and uh, rest web api with ef core and entire project uh, one is with uh, asp dotted mvc also means mvc is one major role web developer web api and react ui so by using this through through these uh, two projects uh, we are covering three major roles web api and react ui developer in this third project in the second project m asp dot and mvc right that is so this is all about our curriculum all of you any doubts about this curriculum about this content hello all of you any doubts no sir it's clear yeah first we start with c sharp and once the c sharp once you entered into the c sharp parallelly we will start the react also parallelly but initially we starts with c sharp yeah the total curriculum is by me total complete every concept every concept is by me only daily 2 hours is minimum sometimes we may take some extra time also even on saturday even on we will put some extra classes also depending upon the situation but the duration is around 3 months because totally eight roles okay so oh, we, we should not ignore any chapter remember that 
all the chapters should be covered properly so that's why that much of duration is important and to get the skill also that much duration is very important see about that fee and all you can contact priyanka okay other timings and each and everything you can contact priyanka so she will give all the fee details and all, each and everything she will explain everything she is our course manager any doubts i mean clear ilagam completely see we, if required we will take extra time but we don't go fast remember that okay if required we will put one more extra time okay if required we will put classes on sunday also right but see that's why see, it is designed for beginners to professionals okay so everything will be explained line by line pin to pin yeah priyanka right just a minute so for any further details regarding the timings and fee and about jyp uh, program and other additional classes along with dot net i mean or full stack dot net like skill development classes placements okay how our placement officer integrates with the uh, you okay, how the placement officer supports you and how your resume will be prepared and everything okay for all other details please contact uh, priyanka see the number is on the chat any doubts hello somya lakshmi ganesh norin soundarya surya prakash asim okay thank you thank you all of you see you tomorrow before the end of the session a request to all of you ee video loni content meeda meeku ye vidhana tondi doubts unna kuda kinda comments roopamlo meer provide chesinatayite immediately ga ma team vaatiki respond avadam jarugutundi further courses information kosam meer quality thought website ni visit cheyochu ledha description lo provide cheyabadinatundi contact numbers ki meer call chesinatayite meeku complete details anetundi provide cheyadam jarugutundi ఫర్దర్ మీకు మరిన్ని క్వాలిటేటివ్ వీడియోస్ని ప్రొవైడ్ చేయడానికి ప్లీజ్ లైక్ దిస్ వీడియో అండ్ షేర్ దిస్ వీడియో అండ్ సబ్స్క్రైబ్ అవర్ ఛానల్ క్వాలిటీ థాట్ థ్యాంక్ యూ థ్యాంక్ యూ ఆల్